Hello, how's it going? This is uh, Champ Focus, and I'm Gambino. And today, on this Saturday, we have Rob Font versus Jose Aldo. And after pulling an all-nighter, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm exhausted. And uh, after having three cups of coffee, I'm a little, whew, a little on edge. So I'm going to try to get through this as fast as I can while delivering good information because I'm, I did do a, a lot of film, watch a lot of film. So first fight, let's just get to it. We got Vince Morales versus Luis Smoka. Um, I'm going to be picking Vince Morales. I'm going to be picking him to win. By decision, that's a plus 250 odds. Um, I like Vince Morales. He doesn't tap. Uh, I think he's going to be the faster uh, fighter here. I think his ground game, at least defensively, he'll be able to pop right back up when uh, Luis Smoko takes him down. And Luis Smoko hasn't gotten a submission since, like, 2015, some sometime around there. It's been quite some time. Luis Smoka is very dangerous. I can see why he is the favorite. But with Vince Morales having already fought this year, it's going to go on and say that he's a little bit more active right now. Where was that? Uh, 2018 was the last time he got a submission. And I just think... Vince Morales is going to, as soon as he gets taken down, he's going to pop right back up. And he's going to be faster coming in inside out of the pocket while Luis Smoka is going to be trotting in and staying in the pocket for too long. Uh, like he did in the Casey Kenny fight. I can, I can, I can see um, Vince Morales potentially even getting a TKO in the second. So if, if if you feel like there is a stoppage here, I think the under two and a half at a plus 125 is, is great because then you cover both Vince and Luis. I think Vince is capable of winning more ways and always. So uh, I like him by decision at plus 250, but I'd, I'd, I'd hedge on with that under two and a half if Luis does pull off a submission of some sort. Because I don't think he wins by decision. So, yeah, that under two and a half is pretty sweet as well. All right. On to the next Claudio Puella versus Grutzenacher. Um, it's crazy. Uh, Puella's was an underdog for quite some time, and now he's a, I believe he's a favorite, a minus 120 favorite. I think Claudio is capable of choking out Chris. I know Chris has been choked out a couple times. I know it says plus 100 here, but I've seen him in other places at a minus 120. Um, so at inside the distance, it's a plus 300. Or if you feel Chris might get the finish, um, he may be. I mean, I don't really see. He does step forward a lot, and he's able to switch stances. He can be taken down, out grappled, which, I, which is just what I think Clyde was going to do here. I don't think it's going to be like uh, the Rafa fight where he was fighting a shorter fighter, being able to walk him down and jab him the entire fight. I think Claudio will be able to use his length here. And as far as Claudio goes, uh, he's from Lima, Peru. And, uh, you know, that's one, Lima, Peru, you know, my body is sucio, my Los Angeles crew, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, that, that's actually a big reason I'm going to be picking Claudio, and he's crafty on the ground. He's got a strong lead leg kick, um, pops right back up after you take him down, um, I just I think he's going to be the better grappler in this in this fight and long enough to keep up in the striking. 
So I just think he'll be the better overall fighter here. So I like him at a inside the distance at a plus 300. And yeah, I kind of just don't see this going the distance. So if a safe bet would be the no at a at a plus 125. Let's see. On to the next. Alonzo Menafield versus William Knight. Um, I, I, actually, this is one of the fights I didn't do any film for because I have done it so many times before. And I'm just going to stick with my initial pick, and that's William Knight. I just I think he's going to be able to withstand the fire a little bit more than Alonzo. I have a hard time believing Alonzo is going to knock out William Knight. Um, if Alonzo wants to win, um, I, I believe he'll have to wrestle. And I don't know how whose cardio is going to wilt first. And um, I just I believe William Knight's going to pull it off here. And um, betting him straight up is is the way to go to at a plus one forty. I think he'll catch that counter left hook uh, that he hit Fabio with, and Alonzo will be the scared fighter in there running away. On to the next. We got Mallory Martin versus Cheyenne Blissmus. Bliss, Cheyenne Blissmus. And um, I got a Cheyenne here. Uh, it's not a scent bet either. <laughs> uh, I saw her fighting Vanessa Demolopoulos, and she seemed like a very relentless grappler, really all over Cheyenne, and Cheyenne was able to just shuck her off and was smart. She stayed away from her when whenever um, Vanessa would uh, lay on her back, uh, inviting Cheyenne in, and Cheyenne would have no part of it. Um, I think she'll do a lot of that in this fight if Mallory – is ever trying to go to the ground, she'll be able to shake her off and will be the stronger fighter here. So I can see Cheyenne uh, just being the all-around better fighter uh, in this matchup. Um, as far as defensively uh, with the uh, against the takedown and um, grappling. So I think she'll stay, stick her distance and, and um, uh, use her footwork to, to win this fight. Um, as she keeps her feet active. Um, she, she she loves the one two. She's got good kicks with her lead leg. And uh, she, oh yeah, she she actually had a similar uh, injury to Jamal uh, Jamaha Hills, where she uh, dislocated her elbow after uh, in that same uh, Vanessa fight. And uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. They should, I wonder if they, they know that about each other. But I think uh, she wins by decision, and that's a plus 105. I think she just keeps her distance and outpoints Mallory and just pretty much negates, stops any type of offense Mallory tries to throw at her. And if Cheyenne that does go. Versus Jeremiah Wells. Jeremiah Wells uh, looked insane in his last fight. Insane. Insane power. Um, and I can see uh, why a lot of people are picking Jeremiah Wells. Uh, I mean, he's a, he's a great underdog for sure, um, especially after his last fight. I mean, he could end the fight. At any second, but uh, I think the difference between Jake Matthews and Worley Alvis is that Jake Matthews is going to use his feet, similar to similar to the Cheyenne fight, and he's going to mitigate a lot of the explosions that Jeremiah is capable of. Um, and then later on in the fight, those ex explosions won't be occurring as often, and he'll be able to point out point. Um, Jeremiah in that fight. Um, 
So I, I have him uh, winning by decision at a plus 130. I think that's, that's perfect. I mean, uh, Jeremiah is crazy, but I have seen him kind of lose that sense of urgency and um, become really one-dimensional, very predictable. And uh, so I think and his his punch count just just seems to to fall once uh if he can't get that that finish that he's looking for right away it just seems like his his, his punches start to decline and he, now he's only throwing one at a time instead of uh, a blitz of 3 so i'm going to be going with Jake Matthews he's he he keeps the fight at a kicking distance pumps the jab a good one too efficient with his energy mm. he does have a some wrestling i don't think jeremiah will be able to do what sean brady did to jake matthews so uh that's 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 what i'm thinking And he can get out jabbed. Yeah, yeah. We're going with Jake Matthews here. By decision, plus 130. And I, and I guess if you wanted to pick uh, Jeremiah, the, I wonder what the under two and a half is for this. Because, I mean, it must have not been so great. It's not even on here, up here. Okay. All right. Well, let's go on to the next. Make, make some progress quick. We got Brian Barbarina. Barbarina versus D Darion Weeks. And uh, I know uh, Weeks is coming in on, like, a week's notice. But uh, I, I believe he was supposed to fight in the Contender Series. And so it, the fight fell through for some reason. Um, but here he is, ready to fight Brian Barberina. And I have a feeling he had a – he knew this fight was coming up. So uh, I like Darion here. Uh, he's going to he's gonna be the stronger of the two, I believe. And when it comes to the grappling, which is what Darian's going to want to do, um, he just seems, as of right now, like the younger, more brutal fighter, even though I, I think Brian is pretty young. But he's been through some injuries, and I believe he had a, a couple of hernia surgeries. And he couldn't beat Jason Witt, uh, like... You're supposed to knock out Jason Witt. Sorry, man. Jason Witt is very chinny. And in that fight, he himself seemed to get knocked down. So I think this young guy here is going to come in and probably put him down. But I like the idea of just betting him straight up. He's a he's an underdog and he's young. And if you wanted to bet him inside the distance, it's a plus 200. I mean, that's real degen real generate but straight up plus 110 i think that's that's the way to go all right next we got zalgus really Let's see where we at Zalgas Zumagulov versus Manel Cape. Zalgas Southpaw. Um, he's got the ability to switch stances, leaves his hands down a bit though when he's striking, when he goes for those power strikes, those big hooks. He just leave, leaves his face exposed. And uh, I think Manel Cape's going to be drawing those moments a lot out of Zalgas. He's going to faint. I think this is going to be similar to the Rowling Paiva fight, but with more feints involved. And I also uh, like Manel Cape's uh, ground game if it does hit the floor. I think 
he's he's active in his guard, so he'll either use submissions to make an uh, an escape or or use them as just straight up offense and pull off the submission. I I, I wouldn't be surprised if you won by submission here. Um, not that it's easy to submit Zagas. I'm just you know there there I believe there will be some grappling involved. So, but uh. uh I, I don't like how much he waits, and it does seem like sometimes he just thinks he's ahead in the scorecards, and so he just loses a sense of urgency. But um, I'm, I'm liking him here in this fight. Uh, I think he'll be the more technical fighter here. Um, Zagas is more of a wrestler boxer, so I think Manel's uh, – Manel's, uh, Grappling and wrestling will be sufficient enough to to be Zagas. The under is a plus one sixty. I think Zagas is tough though, so I I do think uh, Manel wins by decision, and that's a plus one twenty. But yeah, if uh maybe I, I I don't I guess Zagas could win by a decision, so that that'd be the way to take Zagas. I guess is by decision. The under is plus 160. That'd be a sweet bet, too, in case you think one no. Or if you think anybody gets a finish, the uh, under two and a half is plus 160. So that's definitely something I'll be putting in there. I like the under is two and a half, guys. You, know, you never know what's going to happen, and that's a good amount of time. You get plus odds on that. It's, you feel like you got to jump on it every time. Next, we got Maki Patolo versus Dusko Toto. Todorovic, uh, coming into this fight, I was I was all over Maki Patolo thinking he was going to go in here and drop the coconut bombs on Dusko's chin because we've seen him get rocked by Punaheli Soriano. But uh, after his last fight against um, Gregory Rodriguez, Robocop, or Obama, whoever, whatever you want to call him, um, Dusko look look better. He looked better, and uh, if that Dusko shows up, I, he beats Maki Patolo. He does. He was able to, and Gregory Rodriguez is a monster. Puna Haley Soriano is a monster. Dequan Townsend is a monster. They're all huge in their own ways, and now he, he gets to be the bigger guy on, in the cage uh, this Saturday. So I like. Does go in this position. I feel like he's the fighter with more upside between the two. So I like I like I like Dusko here at a let's see what we got. I think I think it goes the distance. I think he just presses them up against the cage, presses the pace on Maki. Maki seems very tough. Um, I, I guess he could get a submission here. That's my only worry is, is that he gets a submission. Let me see. Let me check this out. Dusko. Dusko by submission, I believe, was a plus 650. Because Maki is, that if you're going to, plus 145, Dusko. But, yeah, I, li I like I like this to go the distance. So, I would just bet the the yes, this goes the distance. And, but my pick, my pick for this fight is uh, Dusko. I think he wins this fight. But my bet would be that this fight goes the distance. Yes, it does. All right. On to the next fight. As far as Maki goes, I just feel like he can get picked apart from the outside. So that's a lot of what's going to happen in this fight. And I don't feel like he has a better grappling. So it just tells me Dusko is going to be the better overall fighter here. Now we got uh, Alex Morono versus Mickey Gao. Uh, just all these fights is good. Every single fight, hard to call. I mean, 
I wouldn't be surprised if I got every single one of these five, uh, wrong. But I'm I'm feeling confident. I'm I'm liking all these picks. But hey, you never know, man. But uh, Mickey Gal versus Alex Morono. I'm going with Alex Morono here. Uh, Mickey Gal rips the body with the leg kicks. That could be a big issue for Alex Morono. Um, he does. He he likes to level change. He goes from the single leg. Uh, and to the to the body lock and works works whatever he can he wrestles but he's looking for subs uh and if he's getting wrestled then he'll he'll use his subs to create an escape he does have his hands down when he starts to get tired um he's he's got good speed in his hands but he can get outworked um in in those grappling positions uh mike perry did a lot of that he he gets a little sloppy and a little lazy and after a while it just looks like he's just trying to survive in there so um it doesn't ever look like uh he's in the he's feeling the urgency to finish a fight because he's down on points it just seems like he's just waiting for the fight to be over so i'm gonna be going with alex morona he does show up with a sense of urgency. He does show up with tons of pressure. He throws bombs. He's a bit technical. Um, um, I think he's just as talented on the ground, so I don't see him getting um, – I see him outworking uh, Mickey Gow in, in any scramble and and basically putting the fear of God in, into Mickey at some point while Morona will just be – thriving due to his success on to the next fight brandon allen versus chris curtis this is a this is a this is kind of like a hard fight considering um sean strickland beat the hell out of brandon allen and that happens to be chris curtis's coach but uh I like Brandon Allen here. I think he will wrestle. Um, and that's, I don't think he gets a finish here, but I think he will look to wrestle. And I think, I think just him holding Chris Curtis up against the cage will, will help him a lot. And just similar to the Jake Matthews fight where Jake Matthews has to um, be wary of, uh, Jared Miles power, so does Brendan Allen here. He needs to make sure he's cautious of Chris Curtis's power while landing his one twos, his kicks, getting in there, going uh, level changing, pressing uh, Curtis up against the fence, trying to get a takedown, going, uh, trying to uh, get. Uh, he, I've seen that uh, Chris Curtis doesn't mind giving up his back, so he could do something like that, similar to. to um, the Jose Aldo, uh, Marlon Vera, the in the third round, where, where um, Marlon, I mean Jose Aldo, just held on to Marlon Vera's back. Brendan Allen could do that, try to work for a rear necky choke, but I, I, I don't see Chris Curtis getting finished. I don't see Brendan Allen getting the the finish here. Chris Curtis is a tough guy. Um, he's fought some talented fighters and fighters with ten submissions and. And, and he's not one of them. You know, he's taking these people to decision. So I like I like the decision prop here for uh, for Brendan Allen, and that's a plus 140. Um, and then I, I guess if you like Chris Curtis winning inside the distance or Brendan Allen to win by submission, uh, well, then the one and a half is a plus 160. And I, I think if Chris Curtis pulls it off, it's probably going to be within that time frame. So. And then you kind of cover both there in case something crazy happens. So, uh, yeah, I like Brendan Allen here, though, at a, by decision at a plus 140. And on to the next. Flying through this card. I know I'm not saying a whole lot as uh, I, I usually do, but uh, it's better. Clay Guida versus Leonardo Santos. Um, I think... Clay Guida doesn't ha do enough damage. I think 
he moves his head a lot and he moves his feet a lot, but he doesn't do it at the same time. So he's either moving his head, standing right in front of you, or he's moving his legs, not moving his head. So it's one or the other. Um, he uh, it's aggressive, I guess. Uh, but once again, not a whole lot of power in his hands. He does throw the overhand. He spams the overhand. Um, he'll, he'll slip, jab, throw the overhand. Um, we'll look for a takedown. Once he starts to grapple, I don't see a whole lot of output coming on, coming coming out of him. Um, and sometimes his punches just look like he's swinging for the fences and it just doesn't seem very technical, and Leonardo here will be the longer ranger, ranger long range using fighter here. Um, so I think this is set up for him to win, and Clay has an issue with getting submitted, and I believe Leonardo here is very capable of submitting Clay, especially if Clay's just shooting in for a double leg and. You know, uh, Leonardo could definitely pull off a guillotine here. Santos is uh, has a solid counter one too. He always angles out uh, out of his uh, opponent's way. He doesn't just uh, back up in one direction. He's got really good takedown defense, even even for a man of his age. Uh, I believe he's forty one. Um, he just he does a good job of staying in that kicking range. He he can be held up against the cage though, and in that Grant Dawson fight, I I could I thought Leonardo was winning more dominantly as I rewatched that fight. I I, I see that. I mean, even if that fight had gone all. Uh, had gone all the way, I, I think Grant Dawson made a case for himself um, and could have potentially won a split decision. So it's it's hard to call, but Leonardo had tons of, tons of success against a very young, hungry, uh, up-and-coming prospect. So uh, I believe he gets rid of Clay Guida here. And, um, I mean, he defended 13 takedowns in that fight against Grant. Grant Dawson, so I think his takedown defense will be fine. And if all that's left is Clay Guida in open space against a long rangey striker, well, I like the odds of that long range, uh, lengthy striker. So uh, Leonardo Santos, I like him by submission. So the under two and a half is a plus one forty five. I like that a lot. Um, if Clay Guido wins, the only way I see him winning is by him getting takedowns and somehow being able to control Leonardo on the ground. But I just don't see that happening. Um, but if that's what you were going for, that's a plus 250. But I like the under two and a half here at a plus 145. That'd be my bet. And Leonardo is my pick. And now we go to the next fight, Jimmy Crew. I believe. Jimmy Crew versus Jamahal Hill. And as I was saying earlier, Cheyenne had a similar injury to Jamal's, but just not as recent. Jamal just had his injury, I'd say about six months ago, something somewhere around that range. Uh, Jimmy Crew had his two months prior, so eight months ago. Um, I like seeing that Jimmy Crude is five years younger with more experience. I really like that. And then that loss, that, um, that loss that uh, Jamal has is to somebody Jimmy Crude beat. So I, I, I'm going with Jimmy Crude here. It's pretty much obvious. Uh, explosive, relentless when he gets the body lock. Uh, just constantly looking for a more dominant position. Uh, if he can't get it, he's he's on you like a leech, grueling wrestling pace. Um, and once he takes you down one the first time, it just it gets easier for the guy. 
and yeah, it just if if he can't get it the first time, he, the opponents take down defense. Whether it's good, it starts to wear, and it wears wears down quickly. So I like Jimmy Crew here. He's he's gonna be the more well-rounded fighter here, I believe. He's gonna be levels above Jamal Hill on the ground, and just good enough in the striking to to pull off this win. Uh, I like Jimmy inside the distance. I I like him in uh inside one or two, if, if you could find that somewhere. Uh, I see that at a plus one twenty, and I think if Jamal Hill wins, it's it's because Jimmy Crew has exhausted himself, and I would see that late in the third round, and Jimmy Crew is gotten jabbed all day, and can no longer put up with it and gets TKO. That's that's what I see a third round TKO for Jamal here. Jamal Hill, if that's his way of winning, and that's a plus 1,100, that would be my way of uh, hedging this. So I got Jimmy Crute, first or second, plus 120. Next fight. Bet you can hear that coffee in me, huh? Kind of giving me the jitters. All right, Rafael Faziv versus Brad Riddell. Both guys, incredible fighters here. Very tough. Bring, always bring, bring the fight. Um, but they do have their differences. Um, uh, Faziv has way more footwork than Brad Riddell. I think that's what's going to win this fight. I'm going with Rafael Faziv here. I was a little worried about uh, Fizzy because of Fazeev's, uh last fight. He, he, uh, I would, I guess you could say he underperformed. There were some weaknesses that he showed with his cardio. But as I rewatched that fight, it's a lot of it had to do with just Bobby Green was making Rafael Fazeev miss. He, Bobby Green has actual footwork, uh, uses his feints, rolls. Uh, with the punches, um, I just don't think Brad Riddell is going to have that same striking defense. I see Brad Riddell getting hit quite often in his fights. Um, I believe he was on his way to losing the Drew Dover fight, and then he caught Drew Dover with a with a good with a good counter, a right hand. He's a he's got a laser beam right hand, but uh, he reminds me of the Australian uh, zombie, you know, Korean zombie, but he's not Korean. He's Australian. And um, he uh, lures his opponents into the pocket. He's he's a, a slower, more methodical fighter. Rafael is he's got smooth footwork. He's constantly bouncing, switching his feet up, switching his stances up, throwing his his opponents a variety of looks. And I just I think he's going to be too much for Riddell. I think he's going to be uh, too much for Riddell. I think he could even get the TKO here. I like the. This fight does not go the distance at a plus at a plus one fifty. I think that's a, a beautiful bet. Um, I don't think Riddell outworks Fazevir, and I don't think Riddell will even because he does panic. He does. Uh, he he happens to panic wrestle a lot. Wow, that that coffee is messing me up. <laughs> Jeez. But uh, I don't think it's going to do a whole lot of difference against Fazeev. I think he'll be able to stop the takedown. And um, that'll that'll allow Rafael to take that number 11 and work his way up the lightweight rankings. As I believe he deserves to be in a higher, higher rank. Considering the opponents Rafael has beat. So I like the this fight does not go the distance at a plus one fifty. That's gonna be my bet. My picks for Zeev though. Rob Font versus Jose Aldo. The main event. The whole reason I'm here. This is the breakdown, baby. And this is going to be 
an incredible fight. But I believe Jose Aldo is up for a very long night here. I think we've been talking about footwork, 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 being able to mitigate, deny the opponent's power. And I think this is going to be another one of those fights here. I think Rafont is going to use his footwork to pressure Jose Aldo to make him fight going backwards to make and that's going to be an uncomfortable position for Jose Aldo. Um, I think he'll jab him up consistently throughout the fight. I I can see a late a late round stoppage here. Um, and and any type of wrestling Jose Aldo does, I think, is going to work against him. But both of these men have good cardio. So um, with Rob Font looking to me like the like the actual ban banter way here. Bantam went here, so uh, I like the four and a half here, the under four and a half at a plus one twenty. Yeah, which is Jose Aldo's odds. So if you're liking Jose Aldo, you know he's a plus one twenty. You just bet him straight up. But I, I like, I like. Uh, oh man, actually, I got I got Rob on here four or five or by decision. At a plus 120. So, yeah, I, I like that. I like those odds right there. Because I do think it's a late round stoppage. And if it isn't, well, then it's a decision for Rob Font. And, um, I like this fight. There were some moments in the Marlon Verifier where I felt he was succumbing to the pressure. The forward pressure of Marlon Vera's. And I that's what this fight is going to be. Is Rob Font putting pressure on Jose Aldo. But at the same time, he will be moving his feet. He will be a hard target for Jose to hit. And that's going to cause Jose to tire. And my pick here, Rafa. They got, got through all of them. And I was going to pick Jared Vandera had that fight gone through. 264 pounds against 216. 35-year-old. Hope Jared Vander has fought four times this year. Um, it just I, I don't see why you don't take a shot on Jared Vander. Um, even if he's been dominated by Sergey Spivak or Alexander Romanov. But yeah, these are my picks for this week. I'm gonna go over them one more time. Starting from the top, Rob Font, Fazeev, Jimmy Crew, Leonardo Santos, Brendan Allen. Dusko Todorovic, Manel Kapp, Darion Weeks, William Knight, Jake Matthews, Cheyenne Velismas, Claudio Puelles, Alex Morono, and Vince Morales. Thanks for having me. This is Champ Focus. I'm Gambino. Let's go get it, man. This is breakdown. Boom, 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 bo